Rock Hill and the world. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on what time you're watching this. I'm Chris Carrado, here with another episode show on Rock Hill Video. Uh, you can watch this on rockhillvideo.com. Today we have on, well I should say tonight, is uh, we have on Andrew Stokes. Today, tonight is uh, March 29th, 2021 at 9.01 p.m. And uh, Andrew Stokes is very big into promoting boxing, and I'm sure there's a lot of other things he does, and he's going to share a lot of that with us tonight. So, Andrew, thank you for coming on the show. Absolutely. Thank you guys for having me. It's all, it's all pleasure. All pleasure. So, uh, what got you into boxing in general? Man, um, that, that's a very interesting story. Um, I had a boxing background when I was younger and in the military. Not extensive, uh, <laughs> But I think the, uh, the the main thing that got me into promoting boxing uh, was my brother-in-law uh, coming off the Olympic trials and getting ready to turn pro. Uh, we wanted to have some type of control over, you know, over his career as far as his early fights in boxing before we signed with the big promoter. So we uh, we started doing most of the promotional work for him. Okay. Would you say that promotional is your favorite part of boxing, or is there another aspect or aspects that you enjoy? No, I think that's my that's my favorite part. You know, once you get bit by the promotion bug, man, it's hard to, you know, it's it, it's it's hard to shake, you know, to 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 shake it, man. I mean, uh, being a promoter is something special. It takes a lot of hard work and dedication, uh, but there's a lot of satisfaction when you pull events off. So. Um, I really, I really enjoy promoting. I've done other things. I've done, I've been camp coordinator for certain fighters. You know, I've owned boxing gyms, trained fighters, uh, but it's nothing like being a boxing promoter. Okay, I'm sure you know you probably uh, enjoy some of the stress uh, building up to it, don't you? It can be very stressful, man. The the longer you do it, though, the better you get, and a lot less stress, you know. So um, I've been lucky to be doing it for a while, and you know. I, I wouldn't say it's stress-free because there, there are a lot of aspects to promoting boxing events, uh, but the stress has definitely lessened over the years. Okay. Any other reasons you got into promoting? That, we haven't really um, that was mainly it, man. Um, like I said, my brother-in-law, we wanted to, uh, we wanted to be um, in control of the platform in which he fought, especially early on in our careers. We wanted to go to a promoter. Um, uh, with a resume, so you know my my sister, who's just probably one of the most intelligent people I've ever met before in my life. She contacted me and said, uh, um, "Let's join together and start promoting." And um, and with her husband at the time, Travis Sims, let's start promoting Travis ourselves and moving him. And then eventually we he signed with Don King, and, oh. <laughs> and then. Because I had been promoting him, I had started promoting other fighters, and it, it just evolved from there. Don King, wow! So you you really have been involved for a long time. Long time, man. Is that so? I guess that dates back to the eighties. Uh, no, a little bit more recent than that. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. Ninety. Okay. Ninety. Yeah. Well, even still, you got you know, like thirty plus years under your belt, roughly, right? Oh yeah. Okay, that's yeah. awesome. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, 21, 21 years promoting. Oh, 21 years, okay. Yeah, 21 years promoting. Okay, okay. So you started right right as we hit the new uh, the new. Yeah, century. I, did, I, I did my first event in October of 1999. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So right before we hit our 21st century. Okay, wow. Mm -hmm. That's quite a, quite a resume. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. And any other roles you have right now, other than the promoting? Uh, I own a couple other businesses. Okay. Uh, but uh, promoting takes up most of my time. I'm sure. So it is my main hustle, so to speak, right now. Yeah. Okay. Who would you say are some of the most uh, memorable boxers since you've been promoting? Oh, definitely Travis. Uh, Travis Sims. Uh, Louis Colazzo. Um, I had the opportunity to to have a lot of other fighters on on you know some of my other boxing events. I can't even name all of them. Uh, Jadon Coddington, um, and then locally here, um, 
DeAndre uh, DeAndre Robinson Neal, who is who's twenty and zero now. I no longer uh, promote him, but uh, he was probably uh, one of the biggest fighters, you know, in this state. Uh, it's just so many, man. I, I I hate to start naming, you know, throwing names out there because I know I'm going to miss somebody important. Um, Angel Gladney, a female fighter, I think Angel, Angel uh, maybe fought for four or five world titles. Um, oh, man. It's, it's just so many, man. Right, right. A lot of fighters. But probably two most famous, uh, they were both world champions, were uh, Travis Sims and uh, Louis Colazzo. Got it. Okay. What specific moments have been the most memorable for you? Yeah, winning world titles, uh, being being you know on the big stage with those guys when, when they won world titles. That that was the biggest thing, you know. Okay. Doesn't get any bigger than that. No, I can't see how. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, now uh, I noticed in the past few years, boxing is has really grown in the Carolinas. You know, do you agree with that? You know, you know, how do you think we can continue to keep that trend going? Yeah, there's been, uh, especially since the pandemic, you know, we're a southern state. We're one of the first states um, that, you know, allowed promoters to start doing events, you know, during the pandemic. So there was an influx of promoters coming to the state to promote. Uh, And it's been good for the, you know, it's been good for our athletic commission, for our state. And for other promoters, man, because you can come down, um, you can come to South Carolina and do shows pretty reasonably, and almost as often as you want to do them. So this was a this was a safe haven for promoters um, that you know that still need the opportunity to promote events and uh, promote their fighters, um, and and it allow promoters to uh, uh, you know. Um, put on events so that their fighters aren't stagnated. You know, after some of these guys, you know, had to take the whole year off, yeah. you know, when uh, COVID-19 started and um, and it's put a lot of pressure on the promoters because we're obligated as promoters. When you have fighters signed, we're obligated to do so many fights a year. And, um, of course, the fighters and everybody else understood that after the first year, but, you know, after that first year, you had to make something happen, and uh, South Carolina afforded the uh, uh, promoters the opportunity to come here and promote, and and it's just it's just been it's been crazy, it's been okay. ridiculously busy for our athletic commission, and um, and for for the other promoters around here. So South Carolina definitely kept it alive. Absolutely, absolutely, uh, and and keep in mind North Carolina doesn't really have a commission now, so. Uh, we we have a lot of uh, promoters that you know border the state, border the state in North Carolina. So it's just a matter of them, you know, driving fifteen twenty minutes, a uh, hour two hours, and they're you know they can continue promoting here in South Carolina. So by virtue of uh, North Carolina not having the commission, that also helped uh, build up boxing here in South Carolina, so to speak. Right, because where, where I'm at in Rock Hill, and even, you know, you're down in what, Columbia, right? I'm in Columbia, yes. Yeah, that's still not even too far into South Carolina for people. No, not at all. And Charlotte's right across yeah. the border, for those who don't know where we're at. That's pretty close. Okay. Yep. All right. Um, I, I, if, correct me if I'm wrong, you have uh, at least four scheduled uh, events coming up before the year's out, right? Yeah, yeah, I do. I have uh, April 17th. That's in Aiken, South Carolina. Um, I think June 19th is back in Columbia, South Carolina. Um, and then I think we go September and I can't remember the date. Sorry, I had September and December back in Columbia. Uh, but we're looking to squeeze another date or two, oh. um, you know, into our rotation this year. Uh, we'll probably go back to Aiken at least one or two more times. Um so we're we're gonna have a a busy you know the next three quarters will be really really busy for us in boxing. Okay, so potentially five, if not half a dozen more opportunities. Yeah, we um um we we did a show in December, and I was real skeptical about doing that show because of uh COVID. 
Um, and, and I wasn't sure if it was really the right time to do that event. I think I alluded to that on a, another interview I did. Um, but we put all the uh, safety protocols in place and, and we had a pretty successful event. So um, because I wasn't going to plan another one until this thing was over, I was really nervous about doing that event. I didn't want to host an event where it would be considered a super spreader, so to speak. And um, But it turned out okay. And uh, by the time we went to schedule another one, all the dates and venues were booked up for the beginning of the year, which was fine with me because it just gave us more time to plan and uh, uh, more time for this COVID-19 to clear its way out of here and get people vaccinated. And I, I think we're, uh, we're in a pretty good place right now. And plus, there were a lot of limitations, too, from the state. Although you could host events, you couldn't have huge crowds. <laughs> Um, w without special permission. So I think we're in a really good place right now, and I think we can, uh, we can, uh, you know, do events and, um, and, you know, still be responsible while doing them, you know, based on our current situation. Got it. Uh, I'm not sure if you feel like you've already gotten there, um, but whether you have or you haven't, what would you say your ultimate goal has been with boxing? I provide a, flat, a platform to help these young fighters in this state develop themselves and hopefully, you know, get a shot at those world titles. Um, and then that's really it. It's, it's really that simple. Okay. You know, at one time for three or four years, maybe even more, five years, I was the only promoter promoting in South Carolina. Uh, people, you know, it's a tough business. Uh, you'd have people that, you know, come in, they'd be one hit wonders, they, they'd do a show or two, and then next thing they're gone. But 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 I understood that because this is a a very expensive undertaking and one or two losses, you know, can, can bankrupt the promoter. Um, but um, people are figuring it out now. And we have more and more fight and more and more promoters coming to the state and we need more promoters. Uh, one promoter can't support all the fighters in and around this state. Uh, but we need promoters that are going to come and do uh, good events. Yeah. Uh, because, like I said before, man, the fans group all of us together. And if one boxing promoter does a bad event, um, they don't particularly single out that promoter. They say, oh, man, these boxing promoters in South Carolina don't know what they're doing. So... Uh, that I'm really, really protective over. I've helped a lot of promoters, and I, and I've helped them for that reason because I want to see them be successful. Uh, because at the end of the day, it reflects on all of us when they don't have successful events. Of course, yeah, I've seen it quite a, about roughly four different promoters, and you all have been in what, Rock Hill, Columbia, Greenville, and Aiken. Yeah. Okay. Any any other spot like Charleston? Maybe anyone go there yet or? Yeah, I'm promoting Charleston quite a bit. You do? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you take it all the way down to the to the bottom of the state, too. Yeah, I mean, at one time, I did 22 shows in 24 months in 13 different cities. Wow. Yeah, so. And were you at each of those events, too? Every one of them. Wow. Okay. So you were every definitely traveling a lot. Oh, we're busy. Okay. I don't think I'll ever do that again. That 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 took that took everything out of me, man. But <laughs> it was fun. Hopefully, you took a vacation after <laughs> a long one. Good. All right. Uh, now, I guess you know. I where can we learn more about your events? If somebody, you know, they, you know, I'm sure you can talk to everybody on the phone and text everybody back. If we wanted to learn more, where do we go? Stokespromotion.com um, on on Facebook. Uh, Andrew Stokes Promotions, um, and even my personal page, okay. you know, Andrew Stokes. Stokespromotions.com. Okay. Yes. Okay. I, kn I know we talked about a good bit tonight. Is there anything else you want to share that I, that I didn't ask? No, man. I just appreciate you guys taking the time out to, uh, to speak with me. Um, really appreciate what you're doing. Any type of media coverage that we get, it's oh. always good for us. So uh, thank you, guys. No problem. Well, Rock Hill and the world, that, that's all for tonight. We want to thank our guest, Andrew Stokes, for coming on tonight and telling us how we can stay informed as far as the, the boxing world goes on in the, the Carolinas and a little bit out. 
Outward. <laughs>